I want to express my outrage at the despicable attack today against the French magazine Charlie Hebdo. It was a horrendous, unjustifiable, and cold-blooded uh, crime. The brutal and senseless murders of at least a dozen people in Paris today at the site of a satirical newspaper, Charlie Hebdo, a satirical magazine that had a history of lampooning political and religious figures. The streets of Paris have become almost a ghost town now, plenty of Americans on those streets, and maybe at the moment feeling more like a target than ever before. Our man in a suitcase who has traveled extensively in Europe and covered different issues there, author of historical fiction thrillers and foreign correspondent, L. Todd Wood, is off the road and is actually in the studios here today. Always a pleasure. Welcome in. Good to get in here, Ed. Thanks for having me back. Good to see you actually in the flesh. Always a pleasure. Unfortunately, we come at some very difficult times here because what is happening in Paris, we hear different world leaders now are coming out and saying, we're sorry, we feel very bad. I, I don't want to minimize what they're saying here. Right. But you've been around the world. You see what happens in these countries. For anybody to express any sort of shock whatsoever that something this well-coordinated and this lethal could actually happen in midday, they're being pretty naive, aren't they? Oh, they really are. I mean, there's a, uh, the Islamic extremist threat is global. Uh, we see it in Europe. We see it in Moscow. We see it in the, in the States. And I think that uh, it, it's something we should be expecting here in, in France and in Europe and in England primarily, Spain where they had the subway bombings. I mean, th they have a, a real problem with extremists coming into the country, uh, not assimilating, and, and really just being a subculture, if you will. And, and, and how they deal with that, because it's really past the point of no return, is, is up in the air. I don't, I'm not sure how they're going to really put a lid on this. Is it fair to say, though, because the population in France is 10% Muslim at this point. Right. But when you talk about that assimilation, mm -hmm. there is no, and again, I'm, I'm speaking only from what's read, said, you have the experience, that there isn't a, a push for them to assimilate. The, the people in, in France, the governments there, have your community, have your, don't assimilate into what we are. That's frighteningly dangerous. It, it really is, because you don't know what's percolating under the surface, if you will, in, in these communities. And I read a statistic this morning that 25% of the population of Paris are recent immigrants, uh, you know, just like in the U.S., where we're being we're seeing large populations of immigrants crossing the borders and uh, building their own little communities and not really assimilate, assimilating into the rest of the country. So, uh, you know, the extremist problem is real. Uh, it's happened all over the world, and it's something that you know our president can't even say the word terrorist. So, how do we how do we deal with that here in the U.S. and how does Europe deal with it? Is is just to be seen. But is Europe dealing with it? It would seem as if they don't deal with it at all. It basically is out of sight, out of mind. And, and that, is, uh, that is what is going to have to change in Europe if they want to have a successful society because this model is not working. And it, it, they have encouraged immigration across Europe. And, you, and you're seeing the demonstrations. You're, you're seeing the reaction to the large benefits in the cradle-to-grave welfare state uh, that the government cannot afford. And so they're, they're at a real crisis point. You know, Greece is about to probably leave the euro uh, due to a lot of these issues. So it, I think you're going to see Europe in, uh, convulse over the next few years from a lot of different issues, and Islamic extremism is one of them. We are often led to believe in many times by the television reports coming from Europe that the people there are very quiet about this, that they're very politically correct, we don't mm -hmm. mind this. From your dealing with mm -hmm. the people, the governments, the agencies, is there an Islamic fear of some sort of a government takeover, if you will, or trying to overrun a country to make it an Islamic state? Well, you're seeing a very large reaction uh, from some of the right-wing sectors in Germany, in France, in, uh, you know, England, uh, and, and as a response to this. But what you really have, I think, is an informational warfare uh, strategy that's, that's being replicated around the world. Uh, you, you have ISIS, which has a huge social media presence. They recruit people in the U.S. from social media. They target journalists who don't agree with them, just like today. And I, I think this is almost a, a new form of warfare. Putin and Russia used it very effectively in Ukraine. And NATO is actually now uh, putting together a task force on how to counter that informational warfare, if you will. I mean, a lot of these, or our enemies or adversaries, see journalists as legitimate targets if they don't agree because they can hurt their campaigns. Why don't governments see this happening? You and I are sitting mm -hmm. here talking about mm -hmm. it. We know it's happening. This is a flat-out attack on the press mm -hmm. and basic freedom of the press. But the government seemed to go, don't worry, everything will work out. Todd, what, where's this disconnect? 
I, I think it comes from a... Naivete? A, do they just want to be politically well, correct? Do I, they want I, to suck up to people that they want to be their friends? What is it? I think it's an agenda that is ha coming to grips with reality, or, or trying to, or not coming to grips with reality. Uh, and, you know, the left really uh, can cannot say the word terrorist. They don't they don't want to deal with it. It's, they want to sit around and, and sing kumbaya, if you will. And, and these people want to kill us. They want to kill our way of life in the West. And they will if we give them the opportunity. Is the left then just being, not just yeah. the left, but anybody who speaks like that, just being incredibly stupid to what's happening around the world? Well, y you have to confront evil in the world. And, and, and this is where they cannot come to grips with reality. And, and again, I don't know how they're going to deal with it. And, you know, and, they have so much uh, debt, they have so much stress on their societal, societal models that uh, how do they deal with a threat that's in their midst? And, and that is, remains to be seen. Yeah, I hate to try to, mm -hmm. to write a new book here mm -hmm. almost or mm -hmm. some sort of fiction, but with what's happening here, are we looking at the potential for an eventual revolution in some of these countries like France where we would see fighting in the streets based on a religious belief. Well, you've already seen that in France. Right? But I mean, I mean yeah. really, I mean a blow-up, if you will. Well, I mean, the riots in some of the Muslim sectors over the last five years have been significant, and that's a, a worry for the French. And, uh, you know, um, yes, I think there's a, a very good prospect of that. Are we kidding ourselves to think of those Muslim communities while there are people there certainly who don't believe in the violence mm -hmm. but there are many of those in those conclaves whether it be in France, America, wherever mm -hmm. who will protect the terrorists at any thought simply because they are our people. Well you have a, a lot of sympathizers. You have a lot of sympathizers sure. and, and I, you, I think the world has been disappointed with the Muslim leadership or Islamic leadership around the world who have not stood up vehemently and, and said what needs to be said about this type of violence. What are they scared of? Being shot themselves, but they're also sympathetic. Do you think that in those areas as well, those conclaves, those areas, that they're being told, open your mouth, you're dead? Oh, of course, of course. On a daily uh, yeah, basis. Yeah, of course. I mean, that's why you don't see a lot of uh, the, 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 the uh, Muslim clerics or whatever standing up and talking about this on it, uh, from the bully pulpits that they have. Almost few, if you will. By the way, mm -hmm. we want to remind everybody, let's go ahead and show Todd's latest book because Todd is nice enough to come in here. Delta is the latest book. It is. It, it deals with societal change. It's a thriller, uh, page-turner type book, but it does try to tackle the issue of why societies fail. Keep turning the pages for us, my friend. Pleasure Thank to see much, you. Ed. Thanks so much for coming All right, in. All right. Care. Midpoint will continue, and when we do come back, the U.S. State Department response and so much more as we follow the events in Paris.